now to Davos. Uh, President Trump with Bibi Netanyahu, Prime Minister of, of Israel. Let's listen in if they say anything right there. Thank you very much. It's great to be with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, we've developed a great relationship, uh, both as countries, where I think it's never been stronger, and I can honestly say that, and uh, also as personal friends. Uh, we have uh, discussions going with Israel on many things, including trade. But the big move, and something that was very historic, and very important was the fact that we will be moving our embassy, as you know, to Jerusalem. And as we also know, that is way ahead of schedule by years. And we anticipate having a small version of it opened uh, sometime next year. So that's a long time ahead of schedule. It's an honor, and it's a great honor to be with you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President Donald. Thank, Thank you very much. Mr. President, I, uh, I want to say something, because this is the first meeting you've had since your stark decision to uh, recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and to move the embassy and now to expedite the movement of the embassy to Jerusalem. And I want to say that this is a historic decision that will be forever etched in the hearts of our people for generations to come. Uh, people say that this uh, pushes peace backward. I say it pushes peace forward because it recognizes history, it recognizes the present reality, and, tr and peace can only be built on the basis of truth. By recognizing history, you've made history, and we will always remember that. We also support you completely, and your stalwart position on the Iran nuclear deal, you said it's a disastrous deal. Uh, you said that if it's fatal flaws are not fixed, you should walk away from it, and I want you to know that if you decide to do that, uh, then we will back you all the way. We also uh, appreciate the fact that you confront Iran's aggression with us and with other parties in the region as never before. I've never seen the uh, realistic alliance between the United States, Israel, and your other allies in the region as strong, as unified as it is under your leadership. And the last point is, you stood up for Israel at the UN in a remarkable way, rock solid support. Uh, this is a, a place, it's a house of slander against Israel and against the United States. And by word and deed, you've told them enough is enough. Uh, as you uh, finish your first year in office, I want to say that I look forward to continuing our remarkable, tremendous friendship in the years ahead. And I want to express the appreciation of the people of Israel to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, President. Thank you. My honor. I have to say on the United Nations, uh, we were pretty much out in the wilderness by ourselves, the United States, and we heard every country was going to be against us. And it was very interesting. I said, you know, we give billions and billions of dollars to these countries. It amounts to hundreds of millions and sometimes into the billions for certain countries, and they vote against us. And I made a very simple statement that I'm watching. I'm watching. And we ended up getting 68 votes, either yes or we'll take a neutral position, which was okay, too. It was a yes. But, uh, which was essentially a yes, is right. But uh, we ended up getting a lot of votes that we were, I would say, virtually we were going to get none. And uh, we give billions of dollars away every year to countries. And in many cases, those countries don't even support us. They don't support the United States. Israel has always supported the United States. So what I did with Jerusalem was my honor. And hopefully we can do something with peace. I would love to see it. You know, if you look back at the various peace proposals, and they are endless, and I spoke to some of the people involved, and I said, did you ever talk about the vast amounts of funds, money, that we give to the Palestinians. We give, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. And they said, we never talked. Well, we do talk about it. And when they disrespected us a week ago by not allowing our great vice president to see them, and we give them hundreds of millions of dollars in aid and support, tremendous numbers, numbers that nobody understands. That money is on the table, and that money is not going to them. 
unless they sit down and negotiate peace. Because I can tell you that Israel does want to make peace, and they're going to have to want to make peace, too, or we're going to have nothing to do with it any longer. This was never brought up by other negotiators, but it's brought up by me. So I will say that um, the hardest subject they had to talk about was Jerusalem. We took Jerusalem off the table, so we don't have to talk about it anymore. And they never got past Jerusalem. We took it off the table. We don't have to talk about it anymore. You won one point, and you'll give up some points later on the negotiation, if it ever takes place. I don't know that it ever will take place. But they have to respect the process also, and they have to respect the fact that the U.S. has given tremendous support to them over the years in terms of monetary support and other support. Uh, so we'll see what happens with the peace process, uh, but uh, respect has to be shown to the U.S., or we're just not going any further. Thank you all very much. Thank you,